This month we have more Star 64 news, an update to the Pine Buds, which are now called the Pine Buds Pro, a new Pine Time companion app, and more. This is a video version of the community update, so it won't include everything, but it will give you the synopsis, and thanks to Alex, Dezemic, Gammy, and JF for making this possible. And also, if you're interested in more Linux-related videos, check out my channel, Pete's Loving Nerd. We're once again one of the sponsors for this year's KDE Academy, which is taking place in Barcelona from the 1st of October to the 7th of October. This is an annual meetup organized by KDE, and this is the fifth time we have sponsored the event. Since this year's meetup is in person, we'll be flying into Barcelona to attend, so keep an eye out for Mara, Cotillo, and Lucas during the weekend from September 30th to October 3rd. We held the quarterly Q&A on August 13th, and the full uncut Q&A is available on YouTube with chapters for each section thanks to PacOST. The next Q&A will be held sometime in November. We're also printing Pine64 stickers for upcoming community events, and while we are printing some generic Pine64 branded stickers, we would like to reach out to you for submissions. So, if you're artistic and you would like to submit a Pine64 centered sticker design, we're more than happy to receive it. Make sure to have the sticker design include your name or handle, and it also needs to be grayscale and easy to read in a small size. If we receive multiple submissions, then we'll run some sort of community poll and have you select the ones that you feel represent the project best. Please post your submissions on the forum, or if you prefer, in the off-topic community chat, and make sure to ping the mods to make them aware of the submission. The Blade host board for the SO Quartz is now available in the Pine Store. In case you missed it, we covered the Blade and other SO Quartz host boards back in May, and we also want to make it clear that the Pine Power desktop, currently sold in the Pine Store and EU Store, is grounded and has a three-prong plug, as requested by the community. We talked about the hardware revision in the April update, and we are aware that the pictures in both stores were outdated for a couple of days when the new batch arrived, which led to some confusion as to whether or not the hardware is from the new revision. So, all Pine Power desktop units currently on sale and produced in the future will be grounded. As for hardware news, spare parts for the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro are now in stock, and PinePhone keyboard PCBs are also now available for purchase. The reason why spare parts are out of stock for a period of time is due to having them sell out from the last production batches. Spare parts are usually only delivered with a new production run, and the spare parts are basically unassembled PinePhone units. Same goes for keyboards and other equipment. If there's a break in hardware deliveries, and it is likely that spare parts will temporarily sell out. So, moving forward, we will be holding a larger stock of spare parts. In other hardware news, the most recent production run of the PinePhone Pro has seen a small but important redesign, at least for newcomers. The production run of the PinePhone Pro incorporates a nano SIM slot, and the SIM has a clever design which prevents new users from accidentally inserting a micro SD card by accident. There's also a bit of software news to cover this month. Maggie has recently released a set of patches that address some of the issues people have been experiencing, including sound codecs not working after boot prior to an app playing audio, changing controls while headphone or speaker output is active will break audio, and other issues have been fixed too. For more details, check out Maggie's development blog, but in short, these patches ought to improve the sound situation on the PinePhone Pro, and we hope to see them make their way into individual OSs soon. As for OS's, we've seen a few new releases for the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro this month, including Postmarket OS, Manjaro, OpenSUSE, and Danknik's Arch. The last thing we'd like to mention in this post is that we've seen reports of Mobian users having issues with the installer due to the root partition not expanding during the installation process. We have reached out to Mobian developers with this issue, and they have helped us post a fix, which is on the blog version of this community update. So if you have broken Mobian install, check that out. Today we're reviewing the prototype to Star 64. The I.O. arrangement on Star 64 is very similar to what you would come to expect from one of our Model A type boards. Along the leading edges you'll find PCIe on one end and GPIO on the other. At the other end of the board you'll find a digital video output, a double stacked gigabit ethernet port, and a 12 volt barrel plug for power. On the opposite side you'll find 3x USB 2.0 ports, 1x USB 3, an audio jack, as well as a power button. There are also two UFL ports for antennas one for Bluetooth and one for Wi-Fi. The onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules, the RTL8852BU, MIMO, MIMO, Wi-Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5.2 module, and it may already support mainline Linux. The Star 64 also has a MIPI display output complete with a touch panel, a 12-volt power port, a CSI camera plug, and an EMMC slot. 
A micro SD card slot can also be found at the bottom of the PCB, and just like the Rock Pro 64 and Quartz 64, the 12 volt port on the Star 64 can be used for powering other hardware directly on the board, for example having an SSD connected to the PCIe SATA adapter. Speaking of software, efforts to support the SoC in Linux have already begun. Debian and Fedora are already being ported to the Star 5 JH7110, which is great news, and we have certain other OSs will follow. Star 64 will be available in a few weeks' time and will initially be available to developers. As for PineBuds news, the PineBuds are changing their name to PineBuds Pro prior to the release. The hardware is the same, but the naming convention changes to include the Pro suffix. Developments of the PineBuds Pro are proceeding well and CE slash FCC certification is scheduled to start in early September. Here is a peek of the final design. The case features a textured finish on the outside and a smooth finish on the inside. And the buds themselves have a two texture finish too, with the stems made out of shiny plastic and the body being made out of matte. The case now also features a small row of LEDs on the front used to indicate charging status and remaining battery. We usually try to keep the branding to a minimum on our hardware, but it seems people are keen on rocking the buds with a Pine64 pine cones, and so we'll be running some test prints in the next few weeks to see how they turn out. Pine Store commissioned development of an alternative SDK and firmware for the Pine Buds, and the hope is that the SDK will make development of the community customized and user tailored firmware easier to achieve. The Pine Soul V2 landed earlier this month and sold out almost instantly. The next production run is ought to be available soon, however, so you can expect the next batch to land in Pine64 EU at the beginning of September and in the Pine Store a few weeks later. There will likely be a limit on how many units can be ordered by one person to make sure that everyone who wants one can get one. So to be notified of their availability, please follow Pine64 and Pine64EU on all of our platforms. Earlier this month, we came across a very interesting comparison between PineSoul V1 and V2, which includes a performance overview of the new tips. Spore Warrior, the V2 performs much better when supplied with enough power, but the new tips heat up much faster on both the V1 and the V2. When combined with the right power source and fitted with a short 6.2 ohm tip, the V2 heats up to a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius in under 3 seconds. It is a really interesting video by one of our community members, and I advise anyone interested in the PineSoul V2 to watch it. We also have implemented a few anti-counterfeit measures into the PineSoul V2, and one of them is the possibility to verify that your PineSoul V2 is original. The process is quite simple. On your PineSoul, enter the debug menu by holding down the minus button, scroll down to the ID tab using plus, and enter the serial number, first row, into our new online authenticator. Then, you will be immediately informed whether your V2 is an authentic Pine64 product or a knockoff. The PineSoul V2 is also being shipped with IronOS version 2.18, which is still up to date at the time of writing and there are no requirements to update the firmware, but right now it's currently not possible to update the firmware. This is due to the new Buffalo chip that is not using the DFU protocol for flashing in the flash tool. It does however support a different flashing protocol, but there is still work in progress for that to work properly. It will be available soon, so stay tuned for more information in the coming weeks and months. This month we welcome a new companion app in the PineTime ecosystem, WatchMate. WatchMate is a companion app for the PineTime running AffiniTime, which runs on desktop and mobile Linux. It's written in Rust and based on Libidweta and BlueR. It already supports multiple features from AffiniTime such as setting the time, reading battery levels and heart rate values, and over-the-air update support. The UI is really nice, easy to use, and a bit similar to Sigwo. Once connected, it displays various info, allows to select the media player, which will send info to the music app, and allows upgrading the firmware over the air. WatchMate even displays a notification when it detects that a new version of AffiniTime is available. A few features like secure pairing and notifications are not implemented yet, but they are already listed in the roadmap. Finally, AffiniLink is still looking for a new maintainer, but is already published on the App Store through Pine64. Thanks to Xanem for their work on AffiniLink. So, that's the video, and I'll see you guys next month.